Welcome back, my friends. Carrie Green here. We are ready right now to launch into the morning mindset. This is our opportunity to get our minds aligned with the truth of God's word today. And I want to ask you to start out this episode by considering this question. How do you respond to God when things are going poorly in your life? Maybe it's a discouragement. Maybe it's a hard situation. Maybe it's bad news that you never wanted to hear is true in your life. How do you respond to God when those kinds of things happen? That's what we're going to dig into today as we look at the book of John, chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. And you know, one of those difficult situations you may be facing might have to do with your parenting. Maybe your kids aren't turning out the way you wanted. We have a new resource or a new-ish resource called God-Fearing Kids and the Parents Who Raise Them. It's a podcast that my wife and I are producing. You can find out more by going to godfearingkids.com or by checking the link in the description for this episode. All right, friends, so we're looking at John chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. If you have a Bible handy or you're in an environment where you can look at the scriptures, please look at this with me. It says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, and this is Jesus is talking about, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. And when it says signs, it's talking about miracles. It's talking about the kinds of things we have already heard about from Jesus, that he's healing people. He's driving out demons. He's doing all kinds of amazing things. And people are coming and they're saying, this guy must be the Messiah. This must be the real thing. That's what it means when it says many believed in his name, when they saw the signs that he was doing. And then in verse 24, we have this very interesting commentary from the writer, John, about what Jesus was thinking and what Jesus was doing in his response to the people. It says, but Jesus on his part, did not entrust himself to them, because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. Now, what is that all about? It sounds pretty skeptical and pretty cynical, doesn't it? That Jesus has all these people around him who are there, who are lauding him and praising him because of the miracles that he's doing, and might I say rightly so, when we see God do an amazing work, whether it's for us directly or in the life of someone else, we should respond with amazement. We should respond with glory and praise. We should believe in God because of the great thing that he's doing. But what John is pointing out to us here is that Jesus knew human nature. He knew that many of these people were there and were lauding him and being so positive because they were getting something out of the deal. They were the ones being healed. They were the ones seeing their uncle or their aunt or their son or daughter released from some sort of bondage. They were getting the goods. And Jesus was the means by which those goods were coming. But he knew that when that stopped, when things began to go poorly in their lives, which inevitably it would again one day, they would turn from him. In fact, we see that that plays out truthfully in Jesus' own story. The very crowds who praise him later in his life when he's going into Jerusalem and they're lauding him as the conquering king, 24 hours later are yelling, crucify him. Friends, I want to ask you, how do you respond to God when things are going poorly in your life? Are you a fair weather follower? You know what I mean by that? Do you follow Jesus when things are going good, when the sun's shining and there's no rain falling on your head? But then the minute the clouds cover your life and you start to get a little chilled from the wind, you curse him or you turn away from him or you get discouraged that he's not really in your life in the first place? Friends, we've got to guard ourselves. We've got to learn that faith in Jesus does not guarantee that the sun always shines. But it does guarantee that the one who makes the sun shine is for us and is with us and will not forsake us. Friends, we've got to set our sights higher than just the temporary blessings of this life and recognize that through those very hardships that we hate to see in our lives, Jesus is doing glorious things we can't even comprehend. That's part of what makes him God is that he's able to do that. He can take the evil and turn it for good. He can take the sorrowful and turn it into joy. And that 
is even more reason we should be giving him praise. Lord God, help us not to be fair-weather followers. Teach us how to be devoted to you in the times when our lives are going poorly and in the times when our lives are going well. Show us how to praise you and trust you in the difficulties. That our focus and our attention would not fail to stay on you, but we rather would praise you in the good and the bad, knowing you are a conquering king in spite of the difficulties we face. Lord God, make us your faithful people today. We ask it in Jesus' name. 